Hey everybody, it's Steven. So today I'm going to be doing a follow-up to my video that I did on the EMP Money ecosystem. They did some updates to their detonator system and I want to go ahead and explain what those were, show how it's a lot better for some of the smaller people that want to get into this project. And again, we can talk about the partnership with Splinterlands and how the people now in this ecosystem have a chance to take some of their profits and put it into Splinterlands instead of dumping it on their own token and hurting their own stake in this system. It's it's very good if EMP money continues to grow and people continue to make large amounts of money from this project and they have an outlet in, within Splinterlands to go ahead and spend that and it doesn't hurt the ecosystem because of the partnership between EMP and Splinterlands that that money spent on Splinterlands assets can only be sold back to the EMP team from the Splinterlands team. It cannot be dumped onto the market. They have that deal between them and it's a way for the treasury to purchase tokens off the marketplace from Splinterlands. I don't know exactly how that'll all be worked out. The teams will work it out, but it's something just to know. Now, if we go ahead and get into the site, we can look at the detonator and we can see we're about four hours from the daily lottery going uh, be, having its winners. Now, do remember that this system does have this. I got, I went over it in a lot more detail in the other video, but basically every day there are random winners and there is a biggest depositor winner and there is a win it now button winner. And I will go over each of these things so you know what they are because they are all been changed up by the new updates that they've done. In the past, there was only one lottery winner. Now there can be as many lottery winners as the biggest deposit of the day is but there can be even bigger deposits that are giant by one person to on the win it now button and they get to go ahead and double their deposit. So this is a way for whales to get into the system. Now, as you can see, you might not see a win it now button. It's not here. I would I probably have to be on the site. It looks like right when this clicks over to even see the button because people are pressing it. You can go ahead and go down here and look at the winners tab. I haven't won anything Poor me, but you can see that today's win it now winner is the owner of this wallet address. They went ahead and did a deposit of 2% of the overall pool. So if you come to the overall pool here, you do a little bit of a math, you can see at the time they did it, it had to be somewhere around 2000 liquidity tokens. If we did it by the value of the tokens, so let's see, the pool is a little over 7 million times 0 0.02. That was about a 450,000 if you round up, 440,000 if you ran down on the deposit. And yes, their deposit witness instantly doubled. Now do understand they still get back the same amount as us per day based on deposits. As you can see on my little $400 deposit, I've earned so far 0.03 pending rewards that I can either compound or claim. There is a 20% tax when you claim. This system works a lot like the drip ecosystem or the ooze finance ecosystem where there are taxes in and taxes out. And so that's something that you have to understand. All of that money feeds the treasury system and it allows the treasury system to have the money to pay out to people. Now you wouldn't think that this system can work, but it can work there. Some people would call this project a Ponzi scheme or that it has Ponzi nomics. You really need to understand all the game function and the things they're doing on the back end. And then you will realize that they have moved away from that. While it might look like that on its face, they are building in revenue models and partnerships that is going to fix that. So that's one of the other things that they're now doing. They're going to be taking part of this pool balance and putting it into their farms. Now, because we are depositing EMP ETH into the detonator system, they're able to take a certain amount of that and, and go ahead and stake it here, earning E shares, and then they can take those E shares be, and they will go into the treasury system and they can go ahead and sell them for EMP and ETH so that they can go ahead and help keep the treasury good and healthy. Now this has hurt the, the price of e-shares because some people are worried that now there's going to be a big whale dumping e-shares onto the system. Now they did say they're going to be doing this as responsible as possible, but obviously some of the people who are holding e-shares didn't like this change. They did dump their e-shares and we did drop down from about a $700 on an e-share to around 568. Now, if you decided to buy e shares, I'm sorry about that. The change did hurt you a little bit, but overall, this reset should be better for the project. 
Now, today we can see I have 16 lottery tickets, so go me. Maybe I'll be the big winner in a couple hours. Um, there is currently a leading big depositor of 700 LP tokens. Now, if you wanted to snipe that person and get ahead of him, that wouldn't change the prize unless the biggest depositor gets up to $1,000. Or 1,000 LP tokens, I'm sorry. It's much more than $1,000. Because we did pass 600, though, we will have two winners. And if we pass 1,000, we'll have three. If you pass, I think it's about 30. 1300 then you get another one and if you were it can keep going up so that you can get a lot more now you do have to understand that they are they do have a maximum of one percent uh, of the overall pool that can be given away so that's around a thousand tokens so even if it went up to around 1400 or 1500 that the prize pool for this, I believe, would just be 1% of the pool. Now, one of the things that's crazy about that, though, is as this pool continues to grow and grow and grow and continues to go up with these massive big deposits, like today you had one person deposit over 10, over 12,000, I mean, over 2,000 liquidity into this pool. I mean, that moved it up quite a lot. If we have people continue to do that and we continue to see this pool balance go up and up and up and up and up, then the 1% prizes are going to get very big. It is only, you know, it would take it to grow to over, um, uh, instead of in the hundreds of millions to the billions of tokens within the protocol. But at that point, you would add another zero on this prize and you, they'd be giving away 6,000 LP in a day. It's pretty wild to think that this is the kind of future this project could get to if it continues to grow. Now, let's see, we went over win it now button, we went over how they're earning revenue, and we went over the fact that there's going to be additional winners. You can see here they have a little breakdown of all the lottery prizes. So the lottery prize is currently $44,000. I have 16 tickets. There's a total of 4,000 tickets. So my chances of winning are not very good. A ticket costs 0.15 LP. This price varies depending on the value of the LP tokens. As you can see, though, they're roughly about 950. And you can only get up to 50 tickets. So you can't try to stack the lotto too much from depositing new money and you can get 50 tickets from compounding in order to be a hundred ticket person. You would have to have enough um, in there to go ahead and hit this compound button, earn yourself 50 tickets and have enough on the outside to deposit in to earn another 50 tickets. Now you could see that if you did 50 times about and it's a little under $500 that you'd have to be doing, which is really my entire deposit. <laughs> so do understand that these lotteries, you know, to get a lot of tickets is a kind of a high person's um, game, but they feel that that's okay because those are the people who have, who are depositing the most money into the system and helping it continue to grow. Over here, you get to see the largest deposit prize, which is currently 700, who is the leading deposit, who was the winner yesterday, and your deposits today, so you can keep track of your deposits. You can also view hit here to view the largest deposits on the day. There is this one deposit at 700, and there is nobody else that is close to him. Most of the other deposits are kind of in the regular range of normal people as opposed to whales. However, there is a possibility that somebody, this person with 30, could come in and deposit 700, and the way the system works now, they would be at 730, and they would take the lead. That would then require this person, though, to only come in and make one more deposit of 800. They made that change to the system, so it's no longer just one deposit. That maybe hurts the system a little bit, as you didn't have, say, somebody deposit 700, somebody deposit 800, then that person wants to beat them, and so they deposit 900. Sure, more comes in that way, but I think they're hoping here that throughout the day, if someone doesn't come in and do this 700 that big, that some of these other people might go like, oh, I did... I did 10.3. Well, I did 10.36. Well, I did 20. Well, I did 30. And then, then you know, maybe this 10.6 would have come in and been like, ooh, well, I'll do 20 more to get me ahead of the 30. But a 700 whale came in and just crushed all of these other scores. We'll have to see over time if this becomes a more competitive thing. But it's cool that we'll be able to track that. 
Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about where the ecosystem is because in the last video they were above peg and everything was very bullish when they're above peg. They're printing more tokens, inflation is up, their money is, people are making tons of tokens and money and what does that inevitably do? If they do not spend them in the right way, if they're not responsible with them, they knock them under peg. So what happens when they are under peg? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the two main functions that make this gamification work for keeping their token above and under peg. So when you go to the boardroom, you can see that currently they're about 5.4% uh, uh, eh, below peg. So when they are in 5.4% below peg, this huge APR of 2.5% per day that you would be getting paid out on your e-shares and in and one e-share is $569. So just to give you a quick idea, if we pull out our calculator, if you have $569, one e-share staked, and you times that by 0.025, you'd be getting back a return of $14 per day on that $500. That is crazy bullish, but they are currently getting nothing because the system is below peg. So now all the holders of e-shares are theoretically incentivized to get this system back over peg but is that really enough is that enough of a push for them to go out and be like okay i've been dumping emp tokens now it's time for me to start buying emp tokens with that stuff so i'm to help us push back over peg hmm maybe not so that's where the bond system comes in so right now because we are below peg there are bonds that are able to be purchased basically they're saying that if the system comes in and people are willing to buy together the, the whole project 1.3 million tokens and turn them into e-bonds they will be able to push the system back above peg when the system is back above peg you are able to redeem these e-bombs but they but they gamify those and the longer you hold them the more that you you get back so let's say you put 100 tokens in they get your overall a lot of people do that we get back above peg every Everything is kosher and you go to redeem well if you go to redeem right away you might only get back your 100 or maybe even a tiny bit less because there are fees within the ecosystem but if you hold it for an extra week now instead of 100 you get 105 if you hold it for two weeks now you get a 115 this is the way the e-bond system works so a lot of people can be holding these bonds and holding them for a long time and then looking to cash them out when the system is good and healthy and everything is over peg and they're not going to hurt the ecosystem this is a very much a gamified system but now creating their first revenue source for their treasury they're able to hopefully keep it going and keep things working well so let's go back to my idea here now they've said that they are going to be taking some of the LP tokens that get deposited and putting it into their farms then they're going to be earning these e-share tokens and they're possibly going to be selling them that is a system which does create some downward pressure on the e-share token without a doubt now hopefully the giant APR in the boardroom when it is working can get people to go ahead and want to purchase the e-shares I have to admit I'm pretty interested in picking one up but I do have to see over the next couple days how that bond market works because if we're not above peg e-shares by themselves do not earn you anything in the boardroom they can be put into this e-share with an MDB token which I found out is a stable coin or they can pay, be paired up with BNB and they can be staked in their farms for some pretty healthy APRs one of them at 128 one of them at 140 and they can be staked with the with the EMP tokens as well with an LP with but this one right here um, currently doesn't have a daily APR so this one is not being rewarded because it is now inactive so so you have to see when they're under peg they, they some of the some of the you know look the inflation begins to stop and so now the whole project has to rally people have to go ahead and get into the bond system or they possibly could see ethereum pull back a little bit and the emp tokens can hold its level maybe there's all this back and forth now they went since they're paired up with each other in most liquidity pools they're they're going to move you know kind of together hopefully is which is what is what the hope of all of this is but we'll have to see if that ends up working or not
Um, let's see. So, okay, so the idea would be to take some of these profits of the E shares and turn them into Splinterlands cards and then rent those Splinterlands cards out. That would give them another way to go ahead and have build up a cache of things that they would be able to earn a return on that would not be within their own ecosystem. That creates a form of income from another project. That's just something that came to mind that they could do and it would further their partnership with Splinterlands. Now, obviously they don't have to do that. They could really look at a lot of the different ecosystems out there, take some of their profits and put them into those ecosystems, but you're already in a kind of, I would say higher risk DeFi project. Some people may de disagree with me and over time, I might even change that statement but if you moved into a gaming project to have a way for you to earn some returns then that might help your ecosystem have one more way that you have a pile of money being built up to come back into the ecosystem when it is needed all right everybody that's it for the video today i hope you like the updates to the detonator we're going to have more lottery winners we're going to we're going to have cumulative uh, largest depositors there's this huge buy it now button for whales that they're using that's right somebody somebody hit it they hit that button <laughs> And you can see that this system is hopefully going to continue to grow, that my deposits are going to continue to be pushing up here because I'm not quite at my daily earnings that I want. And overall, I'm just going to try to keep track of this project. You know, AJ is a big uh, Splinterlands player. He's a friend of mine who's helped me in the past, and he has been kind enough to help me again. Uh, re more recently, as you guys know, I lost a lot of money to a hack on Polygon. I, I have a lot of money stuck in Splinterlands, and it's very nice when somebody sees those types of things and reaches out again, and you connect. So I really am hopeful for this project. Thank you, everybody, and I will talk to you later.